Hello, my name is Jamie Kiff, and I'm a recent graduate from the OHSU School of Medicine in Portland, Oregon. Thank you for the opportunity to present our research. I'll be talking about our project regarding the characterization of women diagnosed with cervical cancer after the age of 65. I do not have any disclosures. Current guidelines allow for discontinuation of cervical cancer screening at age 65 if women have met criteria for adequate screening, which is defined as three consecutive negative cytology results or two consecutive negative co-testing results within 10 years prior to stopping screening with the most recent test occurring within five years. However, 20% of incident cervical cancers still occur in women over the age of 65. We sought to characterize this population of women who are diagnosed with cervical cancer after age 65 since this population has not been well described in the literature. We also sought to evaluate for any differences in women who were adequately versus inadequately screened prior to being diagnosed with cervical cancer. This was a retrospective analysis of patients diagnosed with cervical cancer at age 65 or older from 2000 to 2020 at our institutions. Study subjects were identified by ICD codes and cancer registries, and after exclusions, there were 141 patients included in the study. The median age at diagnosis was 73.8 years with a range of 65 to 94. 38% were smokers and 84% were white. 30% of patients did not have any known history of prior abnormal screening, though screening history was unknown for 56% of patients. The most common mode of detection was the presence of symptoms at 84%, and the most common symptom was vaginal bleeding at 75%. At diagnosis, 36% of patients had localized, 58% had regional, and 6% had distant disease. The histology distribution was 70% squamous cell carcinoma, 17% adenocarcinoma, and 9% other. Of those with sufficient records to evaluate adequacy of prior screening, 26% were inadequately screened, 4% were adequately screened, and we were unable to determine adequacy for 70% of the patients. And there were no differences in proportions of demographic factors between adequately versus inadequately screened patients. So the median age at diagnosis was 74 years, which is nearly 10 years after the age at which screening may be discontinued. Only 12% of patients with complete records met criteria for adequate screening before their cervical cancer diagnosis after age 65. The remaining 88% had been inadequately screened. Interestingly, 30% of all patients in the study did not have any history of abnormal pap smear prior to their cervical cancer diagnosis. And there were no differences identified between adequately and inadequately screened patients, though this analysis unfortunately had few patients in each group due to incompleteness of many available records, so this limits the strength of any conclusions. The fact that we could not determine adequacy of screening for 70% of all patients could be explained by patients having their routine screening recorded in another system before being referred to our institutions for their cancer treatment. Information not being available electronically for patients diagnosed earlier in our 2000 to 2020 study period, or patients simply not regularly following with any medical professional for several years. Further work is needed to better describe this population. Thank you to Amanda Briegel, my primary mentor on this research project, as well as the rest of my study team.